The Federal Reserve's Federal Open Market Committee slashed the target federal funds rate at its meeting this week, reducing the target rate by 50 basis points from 5.5% to 5.0%. This was the largest cut to the target rate since March of 2020 in the midst of the COVID panic. The Fed also made it clear we should expect more rate cuts by the end of the year. This is all a clear signal that the Fed and FOMC believe the economic situation is worsening. For political reasons, however, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell continues to insist that this month's big cut to the target rate is definitely totally not in reaction to worsening economic data. During the post-FOMC press conference on Wednesday, Powell repeatedly tried to take an upbeat tone about the state of the U.S. economy, explicitly stating, in his own words, quote, the U.S. economy is in great shape and the labor market is in solid condition, unquote. Yet, if one looks closely, one will not find a historical case of the FOMC slashing the target interest rate by 50 basis points when the economy is in great shape. On the contrary, a 50 basis point or larger cut to the target rate tends to come just a few months before recessions and a rising unemployment rate. For example, we see rate cutting cycles begin in the late 1980s, in 2001, and in 2007. All precede recessions by only several months. Moreover, the Great Recession, which began in December of 2007, was preceded by a 50 basis point cut just two months earlier, in September of that year. A year after that, the unemployment rate was 6.5% and peaked at 9.9% in early 2010. Similarly, the Fed cut the target rate by a whopping 100 basis points in January of 2001. That was followed by several 50 basis point cuts. A recession began weeks later in March of 2001. We could even look back to 1989, when the Fed began a series of 50 basis point cuts, only to be followed by a recession in July of 1990. Fed Chairman Powell would prefer you ignore all of this. Powell further stated at his press conference that thanks to this rate cut, he expects the economy to, quote, expand at a solid pace, unquote. Yet this prediction runs contrary to the Fed's own data coming out of member Fed banks. For example, in the August Beige Book, which reports summaries of economic conditions in each of the Fed districts, only three of 12 Fed districts reported any economic growth at all. Five of the Fed districts reported economic activity fell or declined slightly. All other districts said the economy was flat. This sort of language in a document like the Beige Book is remarkable, however, because Fed publications of this sort always err on the side of downplaying any economic distress. The economic situation has to be pretty bleak before we'll see the Fed banks report an economic situation worse than quote-unquote moderate growth. Basically, the FOMC would have you believe that this round of rate cuts won't be like all the rest— and that this week's big rate cut is merely a calm and collected effort to steer the U.S. economy to a soft landing. If things play out this way, it will be the first time in Fed history. Even many of the reporters in the room during Powell's press conference knew this. In fact, one of the more courageous reporters at the meeting asked Powell why he seems to think that the rate cut will, this time, be followed by sustained low unemployment rates. In other words, she essentially asked, explain to us why this time is different. Powell provided no answer except to mumble in a variety of different ways that the economy is doing well. It is clear, however, that the Fed is desperate for you to think that this time is different. Unfortunately, Powell can't seem to come up with an explanation of why that is the case.